Hi, Salem Southline family. It's Sarah from the library. I miss you all, and I miss going into that physical building and being there. In this time of social distancing and stay home, stay safe, I hope you all are doing well. We're trying to do our part to bring you some new, exciting programming on a new format. <clears throat> so here we go. We are, there are a number of us at the library on staff that practice varying degrees of green living, zero waste, sustainable living, homesteading, things of that nature. A lot of those all have overlapping methods and overlapping practices. And we have been trying for a while to figure out how to bring all of our little tips and tricks and budget saving techniques to you, our patrons of the Full Fledged Program. Fortunately, during this time of social distancing, we have a video platform to bring you short videos on these different techniques that we practice at home. So today, I get to present to you the first video in this series. We are gonna be talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, your kitchen scraps, peels, cores, stems of your produce, how you can reuse them in new ways to maybe stretch your grocery budget, that one or two extra meals, to maybe grow your own new produce in your kitchen or at your home. One of the popular items that we regrow here in my kitchen and my home is celery. We currently have two different celeries going. We try different growing methods with each of them. This little one has been in, sitting in the bowl in the kitchen window, water in water. It's changed every other day or so. Has not spread root yet, roots yet. It's been going for about three or four weeks. Typically by now we have roots and we can plant them in dirt. Not sure what's going on, but because it's still healthy, still green, still growing new little core shoots there in the center, we're gonna let it keep going and see what happens. But to start your celery in water in the kitchen, you want to take your celery and do a clean slice of the base of the celery. You want to take off all of the dried outer um, coating from when it was first harvested so that it can draw water up and feed the plant. The other celery that we have going currently on the counter is this one here, which we left all the exterior stalks on. We cut it down when we chopped up the celery and left the bases on. Again, do a clean slice of the bottom so it can draw up that water. It has not grown roots yet. It's starting to get the little um, shoots of a root in a couple of spots, but it's only been on the counter for about a week. So it is a long way to go. It, we have seen some growth. Um, the center stalks especially have gotten a little taller and the leaves have started to branch out. So it is growing and we'll let it continue to grow till it gets roots. And then in some kind of dirt, probably some kind of seed starting or potting soil mix, that way it's really nutrient rich. One of the other scraps that we do at home a lot is potato. I found this friend in my pantry. Uh, it's a regular russet potato. It has sprouted. A lot of grocery store potatoes are treated to prevent the sprouting. Um, I'm sure this one was, but it's been in there for so long that it has overcome that barrier. Um, the russet potatoes you can cut into about two inch pieces once they've sprouted or once you see what they call an eye. This is a development of another sprout here. So you know that it is going to sprout and you can plant that in um, a bed. You want to plant it about three inches below the surface and mound the dirt up over it and then layer in some kind of um, moisture barrier, straw, mulch, grass clippings, something like that to hold the moisture in and then continue to mound that up as the plant grows and pulls itself up. <clears throat> One other potato that we tried this year as an experiment is a sweet potato. It's been living in the kitchen windowsill. Sweet potatoes work a little differently. There's two of them here. Um, the toothpicks are just there to hold them up out of the water in this awkward vase. But the sweet potatoes work differently in that you basically have to sacrifice the whole potato to grow what they call slips, which is a shoot off the side of the potato. These two have been living in the kitchen window for three weeks and one of them you can see here 
that little white spot is just starting to get some root or so they're starting to show little slips uh, little roots are starting what you want to do is let them go again changing the water about every other day until that sprout reaches up out of the water and grows leaves and by then it'll start to grow its own root system off the side um, down where it sprouted from the potato then you can gently break that off the potato and put it in its own cup and once it grows a little bigger gets a little hardier you can plant that in dirt and it'll grow your sweet potatoes so a little bit different process we had to learn the hard way with these guys we tried some the traditional like the potato method where you just chunk up the potato and plant it and nothing happened so to do a little bit more research and found out that for sweet potatoes you need to um, set them in water pointy side up and let them grow their own new shoot and then you take that new shoot that whole new plant and plant that to get a sweet potato one of the other great things that we do in my house is what my kids affectionately call garbage broth or garbage soup so we take um, or I take a bowl this is a two quart bowl um, and I collect the vegetable scraps from the different meals that we've been preparing for the week or however long. Um, I always try to at least make sure I have the basic mirepoix mix, the trio of celery, carrot, and onion. Um, and beyond that, just whatever we've been using. So in here, there's some broccoli stems, there's some leaves off cauliflower, um, there's carrot peels and carrot ends, there's onion, stem or not stems onion ends uh, and outer peels I think there's some cabbage in here oh it looks like we have zucchini ends at the bottom there's usually some garlic ends floating around in there but um, I take this again about a two quart bowl and all my peels they've already been cleaned because I washed everything when I was preparing the original meal that they came from so you take your peels my two quart bowl, which is usually what I aim for because I do larger batches and I shoot for, there we are, um, and I put it in an eight quart stock pot and I fill it about up to the handle, just near the top of water, bring it to a boil, um, let it go for, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, then turn it down, let it simmer for half an hour. And then I turn it off and let the scraps sit and steep in the hot water until it comes to room temperature. That, at that point, um, I take a kitchen screen or sieve or cheesecloth and I strain out the original scraps that we started with and save the broth. The broth I bag in uh, quart Ziplocs or gallon Ziplocs, depending on what I want to set it aside for, and freeze it. Um, if you want, if you're going to use it immediately, you can use it that day or within a couple days, you can store it in a closed container in the fridge. Um, otherwise tuck it into the freezer and you can pull it out whenever you need it um, I've also for smaller batched items I've also sometimes poured it into an ice cube tray and froze that and then emptied the tray into a bag so I have a bag of broth cubes for smaller recipes in the fridge I've, through the fall and winter months I make soup every week I also use it for different sauces, gravies, um, starters for different things. We cook all our grains in it. Anytime we do rice or quinoa or beans, it's boiled in some kind of broth. One of the other things that I wanted to talk about, another favorite of my kids, is potato peel chips. Whoops, lost one. I um, was peeling potatoes at one point and my for mashed potatoes because my kids can't have peels in their mashed potatoes they have to have creamy white delicious fluffy mashed potatoes no sign of a peel anywhere so i ended up with this pile of peels on my counter i thought what could i possibly do with this so what i started doing was when i peel potatoes i have a salt water bath just regular room regular cool tap water in a bowl i add some salt to it um, and i'm peeling the potato into the bowl so i'm peeling the peels off the potato into the bowl. I use my potato aside for whatever meal I'm preparing. Um, and I come back to the peels later. I drain the liquid out, lay the potato peels out on a towel, dry, pat them dry, return them to a bowl, mix with olive oil and salt. You can use whatever type of seasoning you want. Then I lay them out flat on a cookie sheet <clears throat> in a single layer and bake at 375 for about 15 minutes. Any point beyond that, you're gonna wanna keep a close eye on them because they will burn in a flash. 
one of the things that I like to do, just my personal taste, is I love salt and vinegar potato chips. So what I do is I add just some regular stock white vinegar to the salt water bath while the peels are soaking because I like the salt and vinegar taste. These are the few that I managed to squirrel away from my kids last night before they ate them all. Um, pretty crunchy, delicious salt vinegar potato peel. Chip. All the scraps after they've been used to recreate whatever dishes, broths, juices, things like that, I'll go to the compost bin. Another great way to reduce your waste and live a little greener. This is the end of my time with you today. I hope that there was something that sparked some interest. I wanna encourage you to go out and research all the other ways you can use vegetable scraps. There are tons of them, tons of different vegetables you can regrow. These are just a couple of the practices that we use here in my household. We are working on preparing a bunch more videos in this series for you. So please leave us a comment if there's something that you're interested in, um, if there's something that piqued your interest in this video, if you have questions, if you wanna share things that you do at home, we would so love to hear from you. All of these videos are designed to encourage you to utilize what you or most of you already have in your homes and to stretch that grocery budget just one or two meals further um, to reduce your waste just that extra little bit throughout the week. So until next time, stay safe, everybody. Bye.